Psalm 42 tonight. And it's only 11 verses long. We're going to read the, uh, the whole psalm tonight. And I'll try to share with you what the Lord has put in my heart. Psalm 42, beginning in verse number 1. The Bible says, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night. Well, they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. For the help of his countenance. Oh my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan. Of the Hermonites from the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life I will say unto God my rock why hast thou forgotten me why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy as with a sword in my bones mine enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me where is thy God why art thou cast down O my soul and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this evening. And Lord, we thank you for Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Florence, Kentucky. And we thank you for Brother Doug Foster and his family and for the good church family here at Emmanuel. And Lord, I pray that you would keep your hand upon this dear church, dear Lord. I pray you continue to use this church in a mighty way. Lord, I pray that you prepare the hearts of the, of the people for the upcoming camp meeting this weekend, Lord. And I pray that you would prepare the hearts and, and, and messages that are going to be preached, Lord. I pray that you would have your perfect will and way in each and every service, Lord. And I pray for Brother Doug as he, as he moderates and, and discerns your will for each service, Lord. I pray you give him wisdom, Lord. And I uh, thank you for all, all the effort and everything that's going into the meeting. And, Lord, I pray you just have your perfect will and way. And, Lord, as, we, as we're in this service here tonight, Lord, I don't know the needs that are represented, but you do. And, Lord, you have a plan, you have a purpose for this service. There's no one that's here by accident, Lord, and I pray that you would accomplish your will for this service. I pray that most of all that you would be honored and glorified. I pray that you would be exalted. Lord, I pray that as we leave here tonight that we would not leave saying, uh, wow, what a preacher, but Lord, we would say, hallelujah, what a Savior. And Lord, I pray that the saints of God would be helped tonight and encouraged and strengthened from the Word of God tonight. And if anybody's here that's lost, that does not know you as Savior, if anybody's watching by way of live stream that doesn't know you as Savior, Holy Ghost of God, I pray you convict them of their sin. May they see themselves as they are, lost and undone, on the way to hell. But may they see Jesus high and lifted up. And I pray that we get saved by the good grace of God. Have your perfect will and way, Lord. Get honor and glory to yourself. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love Psalm 42. And it's one of the psalms that it, the author is not identified. But I do believe uh, very likely it was King Hezekiah who wrote it. And as you study Hezekiah's life, there's some major events 
that stand out. Of course, one of which is one of the greatest revivals in the history of Israel. And uh, then there were two major obstacles that developed in his life, one of which was an illness from which he received healing from the Lord. And then there was an invasion of the enemy, and he received help from the Lord. And that is a picture of our lives. We, we face illnesses, we face storms, we face the enemy. Brother Doug mentioned it and, and preached on it a little bit uh, this morning. Hey, we have that conflict hey, with the world, the flesh, and the devil on a daily basis. But I'm glad that we have some help. And in verse number 7, the psalmist makes a very interesting statement. He says, Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. And watch what he says. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. <coughs> and I'm reminded of the song. Bar the lyrics, For it is well with my soul. Hey, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And as I look at this psalm, as I look at these 11 verses, hey, yes, I see a, a conflict. Yes, I see a soul that is cast down, a soul that is disquieted, a soul that is thirsting for God. But I see one whose focus is on the right. Hey, his focus is trying to get beyond the storm. He is thirsting for God. And I believe what he's trying to say in these 11 verses is simply this. When sorrows like sea billows roll, I need God. When sorrows like sea billows roll, I need God. And with the Lord's help, I want to preach on that thought for a little while tonight. Hey, when sorrows like sea billows roll, I need God. And as you look at verses 5 and verse 11, they're almost identical. It says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Oh, hallelujah. And I want to show you some things from verse 11 tonight. Now, help us to understand we need God. <coughs> Number one tonight, I want you to see the perplexed soul. The perplexed soul. The psalmist says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? This is the cry of a burdened soul. And as you look at these 11 verses, he mentions the soul several times. In verse 1, he talks about a panting soul. In verse 2, he talks about a thirsting soul. In verse 4, he mentions a poured out soul. In verses 6 and 11, he mentions a cast down soul. And in verses 5 and 11, he mentions a disquieted soul. <clears throat> this is not just a, a skin deep issue. It's not just something that was easily brushed off. It was a deep, discouraging, depressing issue. His soul was cast down. It's the cry of one who is weighed down by care. Like Brother Doug was preaching on this morning, sometimes we're in that valley, and we start seeing the valley. We start seeing the enemy. And then we hear from him. He starts taunting us. And sometimes our trials and our valleys, our circumstances are bigger than what we can handle. But they're not bigger than what God can handle. <clears throat> what, I, what's over our head is under His feet. Hey, hallelujah, I am thankful. Hey, that my problems are not bigger than what God is. <clears throat> and as I, as I see His perplexed soul, as he was perplexed because he was burdened by his problems. He was burdened by his problems. 
And he talks about him in this psalm. He was distant from God, yet he desired God. He was tearful and being taunted. Verses 3 and 10, he said, My tears have been my meat day and night. And then in verse 10, he said, As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me. While they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Ain't that just like how the world works? Hey, they, they want to kick us while we're down. We get in the valley. Hey, where's your God at now? Hey, you, you've been talking about God up on the mountain. Now you're in the valley. Where's he at? He was being taunted. <clears throat> in verse 9, he felt like God had forgotten him. He said, I was saying to God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? The psalmist was discouraged. He was distressed. He, he felt like he was drowning. And so often we get to that point we, we, and we wonder, God, where are you even at? God, have you forgotten about me? I'm in this valley. I'm, I'm in this low point in my life. Where are you at? He's where he's always been. On the throne. On the throne. But the psalmist had a perplexed soul because he was burdened by his problems. But he was also burdened by his perspective. By his perspective. Notice, notice he, he's asking himself a question in verses 5 and 11. He says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? He was asking himself, Why are you at this point? So that tells me the psalmist knew where to look. He knew what to do. Yet he was down anyway. He was discouraged anyway. Why? Because he was human. Because he was human. He was flesh and blood. Just like you and I are. It's normal to get discouraged sometimes. We're not always on top of the mountain. Hey, I wish we were. Hey, it's good on the mountain. But the reality is, we go from mountain to valley. Mountain to valley. And I'm glad that what doesn't change is God's presence. He's with us on the mountain, but He's just as much with us down in the valley. And he was, he was burdened. He was, per, he, was, he was wondering why. Hey, the sin's not in asking God why. Hey, Jesus was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. And when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which being interpreted as my God, my God, why? Hast thou forsaken me? Hey, praise God. Hey, we ask God why sometimes. Hey, the sin is not in getting discouraged. The sin is choosing to stay there. The, hey, and that's what happens a lot of times. We choose to stay down instead of looking unto the hills from whence cometh our help. I see his perplexed soul. Oh, but praise God. Not only do I see the perplexed soul. Hey, I need God tonight. Hey, I, I, I see not only the perplexed soul, but then I see, and I, 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 can, I, I could call this point two, two different ways. Hey, but I see the powerful solution, and I see the precious Savior. The powerful solution and the precious Savior. <coughs> Because the middle of verse 5 and the middle of verse 11 is exactly the same. He's talking to his soul. Why art thou disquieted with me? Why art thou cast down? But then four simple yet powerful words. And words we need to be reminded of. When we're down, when we're out, hey, when we're discouraged, hey, we need to be reminded of this. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves this. Hope, 
thou in God. When sorrows like sea billows roll, I have somebody that I can go to. Because the fact of it is, yes, there's valleys. Yes, there's storms. Yes, hey, sometimes things are over my head. But the storm does not change the person of God. <coughs> He's still the same. The storm does not change the power of God. He's just as much able in the valley as he is on the mountain. <coughs> the storm does not change the promises of God. What he's promised on the mountain is just as true in the valley. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. And as I look at Psalm 42, and I see this powerful solution, and the precious Savior hope thou in God, I see some things that we can do when we're down, when the we, when we feel like our soul is cast down and disquieted. The powerful solution, hey, we need to get intense in our desire for God. Get intense in our desire for God. Notice what he says in verse 1. As the heart, that's the deer, panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee. O God, my soul thirsteth for God. For the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? I'm reminded of what Jesus said in Matthew 5 and verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I wonder tonight, how much do we desire our precious Savior? I wonder tonight, how, how thirsty are we for Him? Hey, I tell you, hey, we, we, get, we get thirsty for water. Praise God. And hey, it's refreshing. But tonight, there's something I need more than physical water. I need God. This is a, a vigorous thirst. This is saying, God, I need you. I can't make it without you. I will die without you. Lord, I need you. My soul is cast down. I'm burdened. I'm overwhelmed. Hey, sorrows like sea billows are rolling. It's over my head. Lord, I need you. It's a vigorous thirst. It's a virtuous thirst. It's the right kind of thirst. <coughs> hey, in, the, in this psalm, he, I, I don't see you were in here, Brother Doug, that hey, the psalmist is craving money. Or fame. I, I, I don't see where he, he's searching for, for worldly friends. What I see is his soul is cast down. He's disquieted. <clears throat> he needs God. He needs God. He's, he's going to the right source. And what we do is we get down, we get discouraged, and then we start going after things that don't help. We start seeking money. We start seeking worldly help. We start seeking wicked friends. But it, hey, it's to no avail. Because it's not the right thirst. We need to get back to being intense in our desire for God. <clears throat> and not just on Sunday. Not just on Wednesday night. Not just during camp meeting. But we need God Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Hey, we need Him every day. I need God tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to get intense in our desire for God. But I see something else here. I see we need to get intense in our discussions with God. Our prayer life. Our prayer life. Notice what he says in verse 4. He says, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. And in verse 9, he says, I will say unto God my rock. When sorrows like sea billows roll, what we need to do? is just pour our heart out to our precious Savior. 
Montana sang it a while ago. Just keep praying. Just keep trusting. And hey, there, there's sometimes, hey, we're, we're human, we get weak, and we wonder, God, are you really going to answer this prayer? Are you really going to answer this request? But see, God doesn't operate on our timetable. Because He operates beyond the realm of time. He created time. And praise God. Hey, it's going to be in His time that He answers it all. Praise God. And hey, He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the other side of your valley. He knows the other side of your storm. And praise God. Hey, when we're cast down, hey, when we're discouraged, hey, we need to get intense in our praying and seeking God and talking to God, just pouring our heart out before Him, casting all your care upon Him. For He careth for you. We need to get intense in our desire for God, in our discussions with God, in our dependence upon God. In our dependence upon God. And this is what the psalmist says, Hope thou in God. I'm glad for Hebrews 6 and verse 19. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and that which entereth into the veil. I'm glad tonight, hey, when everything is going crazy all around me, and I find myself in a valley, I find myself facing a giant, I find myself facing a Goliath in my life, I'm glad, hey, that I can hope in God. Hey, because what happens, like I said, and what Brother Doug said this morning, we start listening to the enemy, to the enemy and we start, the devil starts whispering in our mind, there's no hope. There's no way out. Hey, you'll never make it out of this one. But I have the Holy Spirit in my heart. What well, the Holy Spirit's trying to remind me. Hope thou in God. Hey, which hope we have the devil lies. Hey, he's a liar and the father of it. The devil is the one that says there is no hope. The devil's the one that says there is no hope. Hey, what God says is, hey, which hope we have. It is a hope that we possess. Hallelujah, I'm thankful. Hey, that when sorrows like sea billows roll, I need God and I can depend upon Him. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. I need God tonight. I see a perplexed soul. I see the powerful solution. And last thing, I see the pre-planned shout. The pre-planned shout. Notice what he says. And notice how the psalmist words it. He says, For I shall yet praise Him. In verse 5 he said, For He is the help of my countenance. And in verse 11 he says, who is the health of my countenance. It's not always well with my situation, but it is always well with my Savior. And therefore it can be well with my soul. Hallelujah. And what we need to do is, hey, don't wait until you're in the valley. Don't wait until you're in the storm. Go ahead and make up your mind and say, hey, even though that sorrows like sea billows are rolling, even though things are going over my head, even though things are going crazy, I will yet praise Him. I will praise Him whether I'm on the mountain. I will praise Him whether I'm in the valley. I will praise Him if I have good health. I will praise Him if I have bad health. I'll praise Him if the money's there. I'll praise Him if the money's gone. I'll praise Him if I have friends. I'll praise Him if I'm all by myself. I will praise Him. Hey, no matter what's going on around me, hey, this world loses its mind. Hey, this world shuts everything down. I will yet praise Him. Why? Because I'm still saved. I'm still born again by the grace of God. Hey, Jesus still loves me. I'm, st I'm still on my way to heaven. Hallelujah. I have help tonight. Hope thou 
in God. May I say tonight, I need God. I needed Him for salvation. I didn't get saved by myself. There was no way I could have saved myself. There's not enough works. I couldn't buy my way in. I couldn't bribe my way in. There's no scale outweighing the good and bad. Because even if there was a scale, what you have is God's holiness and our unholiness. And the scale would always be tipped in God's favor. We never measure up, no matter how much we tried. But I'm glad there was a day over 2,000 years ago that the sinless Son of God bled and died on an old rugged cross for my sin. Hallelujah. And I'm glad for the day that I put my faith and trust in Him and in Him alone. I'm glad that I'm saved. I needed Him for salvation. But that was the starting point. That was only the starting point. As a child of God, I need Him each and every day. I need Him on the mountain. I need Him in the valley. I, I, I have no idea what needs are here tonight. But God does. And it's not original with me. It's been said many times. But every single one of us in this sanctuary tonight are watching my way of live stream. You're either, in a, you're, you're either in a valley now, you just got out of one, or you're about to go into one. I, it's the fact of life. But just as much true, hey, as a child of God, God's with us. Hey, and God's the same before the, mount, before the valley. He's the same in the valley, and He'll be the same after the valley. Hey, I'm glad tonight hey, that I can trust in Him. Hey, hey, if you don't remember anything else tonight, hey, remember these four simple words. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. I need God tonight. I wonder, if you're here tonight and you've never trusted Christ as Savior, you realize your need for salvation. If you're here saved by the grace of God, hey, you may be in the valley tonight. Don't lose hope. Because hey, if, if what you're hearing is there is no hope, I can promise you tonight, hey, that's not God talking to you. Because God's message is there is hope. Hallelujah. Let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do love you. We thank you so much for your mercy, goodness, and grace. I thank you for the messages you laid upon my heart for tonight. And Father, I pray that, that you would just take these simple words, Lord, and, and, and use them. Lord, I pray you would honor your word. I pray that forever, maybe here tonight, they're in a valley. Things are going over their head. Lord, I pray that you would encourage them tonight. May they find strength and help and comfort in the word of God. And if there's anybody here that's lost, they've never trusted you as Savior, may this be the night that they put their faith and trust in you for salvation. Get honor and glory to yourself. Lord, I pray for the invitation as it's given. Have your perfect will and way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.